Hi there, thanks for joining us. At first there was only town, and then there was an alternative. I'm Jonathan Healy. Let's look at how shopping centres were the original retail disruptors. The Red Business Podcast with CompuB. Building your business with premium Apple solutions. CompuB.com And you're very welcome to Red Business. And we're out and about today because we wanted to visit what is the oldest shopping centre in Cork. In fact, the second oldest shopping centre in the country. Douglas Shopping Centre and the manager of that is Bartos Misala, who is with me now. Bartos, how are you? I'm very good. How are you today? I'm very well. This brings back so many memories for me. Where we're sitting right now used to be the back door to Tesco, which used to be there, or Quinsworth as it was in the day. There used to be a little thing, a roundy job that you could sit in, and I used to always come out and sit in it while my mum was putting the groceries through the checkout. Uh, That's going back a good few years. How long are you here? I'm here 10 years, 10 years this month. And you've been here through the development through the flood, through the recession. You've seen it all. It's been an eventful decade. Yeah, it has been. Uh, I've initially joined here when we started the development, so I've I've worked in a different shopping centre in Cork before, so when the development started, I have been asked to join the team here to to look after that initially at the start. And uh, yes, I mean, obviously, it's, it's... it was 10 years ago and I mean the the development alone it was quite difficult because obviously it involved you know moving moving the moving the river new road everything like developing into into the existing stage and um, it has been quite an interesting journey and you know looking at it now we've been through some you know difficult times and we've been you know we've been through we've we've been through some you know even more difficult times when the recession hit and everything but to be fair, where we are now is, is, is a very good place and you know we're, we're delighted to be where we are at this moment. And it's a very different place because I would have been out here many times as everybody in Cork would have been to Douglas Shopping Centre at one stage or another. There was a lot of vacancy, you know, Tesco's, the old Tesco site took a long time to fill. But today, walking through the centre, there's very little, very few gaps. Yeah, there is. Like at the moment, to be fair, we have, we have, five, we have five vacant units and... Uh, we also have offers at the moment on three of those, so we're waiting for approval on those, and and hopefully you know that will be improved quickly. So yeah, I mean, we've been through some difficult time, and but you know, and we've always tried to do our best even in that. But now looking at everything that is happening at the moment, like we we are thrilled, you know. And there's another thing about Douglas as well that you know this has always been very strong community community place, you know. And as you said, even your own memories of. Of the place, there always has been very strong links with the with the community, and over the years, and even and even with with, with its new format that it is now, with obviously with the addition of TK Maxx and 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 everything else that you see here and all the shop, it has actually never lost this community, this this community spirit. It was always a central part of the village of Douglas. Yeah, it has always been, and I mean now it has it has kept its it has kept its you know original original strength of that, but it has also even with. Um, with the farmers market now as well that we have every Saturday it has it has it has become even stronger that way and you can see like it's actually a meeting point of Douglas now for the weekends. It's 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 very strong and I mean to be fair for me looking at how everything turned in the last ten years it's you know it's 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 wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Okay, so we're gonna go and meet a few of the retailers here. So who are we gonna go and see first? So first we're gonna meet Michael O'Connor of Pharmacy First Plus. He would be one of the of the oldest tenants that we have here in terms, um, in terms of you know years. So yeah, we're gonna meet him first. Okay, let's go there. The Red Business Podcast with CompuB Business, improving productivity with the latest Apple technology. CompuB.com. Michael O'Connor, Pharmacy First Plus. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. Thank you very much for talking to us today. How long have your family been on this site? Um, my dad uh, took it over in 1976. I think it was open about two years at that stage. So you were really one of the first occupants yeah, of Douglas yeah, Shopping yeah, Centre. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's about I think there's only about one or two others left from that time. But um, yeah, I, I won't ask your age, but I'll say subtly: Were you around for the opening, or what's your first uh, memory of coming in here? I I was actually. Yeah, I was about two or three years old. Um, but yeah. I remember it like there was the old shopping centre, there was no um, roof um, in, the, in the centre of the mall. There used to be a, um, 
what we know we knew it as a playground but it was see, this is it I just said that to Bartes just a minute yeah. ago there was a little circly thing I yeah. remember we used to yeah. all climb into the circly thing absolutely yeah. yeah but I think those pipes would normally be used for sewerage works or something along, <laughs> this, something along those they were, lines they were differently tasked <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's put it that way but like that, that that's what I remember like there was um, it was just open and you, you, you kind of had the rain coming in and um, people walking through it and tr- chaos in the car park um, on a wet day and on a Friday, you know, so it was, it was just a really busy centre. It's actually one of the, it's the second shopping centre in the country. That's right, yeah, I'm after St. Organ, which yeah, is the first yeah, one. Yeah. And it's changed an awful lot over the years, but I'd imagine your business, and what well, would have been your dad's business, has changed a lot as oh, well. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Well, pharmacy has changed um, certainly over the last uh, um, 40 years, I think. We're actually 41 years this year. People are more. Um, they're more conscious of their own health, so they, they, they want to be more informed. Um, they want to ask a lot more questions before they even go to a doctor, so they, a lot of the time they come into us first. Um, we have ourselves started um, sort of acknowledging that um, trend by um, um, advertising and, and, and doing uh, health clinics. So we, we measure people's cholesterol, blood sugar levels. You're giving uh, away, flu, well not giving them away, but you're giving people flu vaccines. Today. Uh, currently today has been a very busy day of flu vaccines. So that's another uh, change in the industry in the last four or five years. So that's really, I suppose, as, as, the, as the years have gone on, it's getting more and more popular. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a really busy day for us. So you followed your dad into pharmacy. Yeah. Um, what do you think he would make of the whole shopping centre now and the way it is? Um, I don't know. He, I must say, no, he, he's, he's always been a progressive, uh, progressive man anyway. So um, he's seen the changes from, I suppose he retired in 2002, 2003. So it was just at the cusp of change at that time. So um, it, it went through a, a, a tough sort of planning process. But in between that, there was a lot of... Um, I suppose uh, anticipation is what was to come, um, and by the time it was completed, he had fully retired. But look, he he still loves it. He, he loves Douglas. He loves the uh, the shopping centre and has always loved it. So he loves talking to the people. The, the the one thing I did notice is that when they did cover in the uh, the roof, it was always his his laughing voice. You would hear, you know, you always know your own. Uh, I could always remember hearing you his laugh. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Yeah, he, he loved it. He loved it. Um, do, do you remember the, the flood? Obviously, you do. Were you affected by the flood? Yeah, we had uh, we had floods up. Uh, it's up to about a meter and a half. Um, the whole entire shopping centre was flooded. So yeah, we were completely wiped, um, and so was our shop in Glanmire uh, on the same night. So on the same night. You so were we a busy two, man. Yeah, we had two pharmacies to to refit. Um, that that year for the, the that following year, so it was. And I remember coming down here on the morning of the flood and looking at the scale of the damage, going, yeah. "This is terrible for all these people," because it wasn't yeah. a very good time no. in terms of the economy. No. Here you were hit with a natural disaster. I mean, was that the lowest point for you in, in, in probably not the forty years, but certainly in most recent memory? Yeah, I think you. you I suppose every industry and every business owner goes through something that they see as catastrophic right so yeah I, I suppose it was it was a shock I was um, as I say now I grew up in the pharmacy and the, we always had a leaky roof it was just a, a symptom of the old shopping centre part part of the offering <laughs> yeah so uh, my alarm went off the alarm was going off in the pharmacy and I got a call from catch security and they told me look be careful there's a lot of flooding I'm like yeah but that roof has always flooded I did not expect to meet the water over by the cinema so um, it was a bit of a shock, I must say now. But, you know, it's, um, it's funny, uh, you know, because I had conversations with my parents about it and they just said, look, it'll be fine. You know, you have a good, you have a great community in Douglas. Um, we've been around for a long time and people love the shopping centre. So they will come back, you know. They might, you know, migrate somewhere else for a while. But, you know, when, when it's up and running and it's completed... They'll come back. So. And they did come back. And, and your brand is growing as well. Pharmacy First Plus, we, how yeah. many have you got now? We have five shops um, right across the city. So we have one in Glanmire, here in Douglas, um, just off Onslow Gardens in, in, Black, in, in Blackpool, Tower, and uh, up in Grenada. So, oh, that's it. so you're out city and county? So city and county, yeah. And is the future bright in terms of pharmacy? Because, again, it would have, it's been a difficult time. Lot of, that there's more pharmacists, I think, than there ever seems to have been before. Yeah, they, they do tend to keep opening. Um, 
I suppose, you know, what it is what you, you make of it, you know, and like the industry is changing um, rapidly. Um, you know, price of drugs are, 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 are decreasing, but like, that's that's the symptom for every jurisdiction in every con in country. So you just have to go with what the customer wants and the customer wants um, information. They want knowledge. And um, I suppose with this, um, with this, we, that's why we offer our health clinics. And like, we are one of um, one of two pharmacies in, in uh, certainly in Cork that um, test uh, patients warfarin which is a blood thinner, so we do that here, and that's been a very innovative um, um, part of our business here, certainly here in Douglas. Um, I just had a, a gentleman from Michigan in today, just traveling Ireland and needed his warfare and tested. Um, and he found you? He found me on the internet, so uh, I was surprised, that, well, I'm, I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised, but yeah, we've had uh, a few traveling uh, uh, patients, so. It's, it's something that you just have to grow with, you know, and, and try to come up with new ideas. It's a long way from the leaky roof and glucose sticks that used to be, I suppose, the most exciting thing for young lads going into a pharmacy, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. You, and it's funny, you know, you are seeing um, um, old and young and old coming into the pharmacy, you now looking, as I say, you know, going back to it, going, looking for information, um, certainly taking control of their own health a lot younger than waiting to go to the doctor to find out that they have uh, a condition that's going to change their lives forever. So, yeah, it's, uh, it is a long way from the glucose sticks, yeah, I think you could say that. Michael O'Connor, it's been an absolute pleasure. Best luck to you and everyone involved. Thank you very much. Thank you. The Red Business Podcast with CompuB. Apple technology and solutions for your business. CompuB.com. Well, we've made it as far now as Music Zone, which is run by Ray O'Brien. Ray, how are you? Very good, thanks. Very good. You're running a record shop in 2017. Yeah. How's that going? It's going okay. It's very challenging, I suppose. Um, I, I, I suppose um, with, the, with, the, with the upsurge of vinyl, things aren't so bad, but still challenging all the same. There's so many options there now for consumption of music, I think. so. But we're doing okay. Yeah, we have a good customer base. So. How long have you been in the industry? Um, I started in 1993, so I started with Golden Disc back in 1993, so I opened my own place then, Music Zone, in 2001, so running my own shop since then. So. And there's been a lot of change even in that time, because would, like, we would have been probably on the CD single back in, in 2001, if I'm not mistaken, on, uh, yeah. long before we ever heard of Torrent or we heard of Spotify or whatever. Yeah, Napster was around already. Napster, yeah, 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 yeah. That, was all, that was the start of it really back yeah. then even, yeah. And, and like, has it ever been a case where you're going, good God, where is this going next? Oh, uh, crystal ball time, Brian Wilson. I kind of phrase God only knows, and I think that's probably it, you know. Uh, who knows? We just keep going from year to year and keep trying to go, but not, no one knows really. You know, there's a bit of a, a bit of an upsurge in the vinyl, but overall it's still fairly... Tentative. We have a good enough niche business here now, but it's tough, like, yeah, it still is. The vinyl thing is a bit weird, isn't it? Because you probably, no more than myself, if you look about the same vintage as me, uh, would have grown up in a vinyl house, whereby right. there would have been records everywhere. Why do you think they've come back into vogue so much? Um, I suppose maybe it was the industry killed them day one, um, because the CD came on and the supermarket was getting heavily involved and they took up a bit of shelf space. I think people always liked the product, I think it was always a good product. Um, they've come back for that reason, I think a lot of people had an attachment to them, they didn't throw them out, came out to people and said they're in the loft or they're in the attic. Or, so I think people always liked the product. Um, it's a lovely, it's a lovely way to listen. Like it's, it, it, no, you need you need a few pound and you need a bit of time. There are the two things you probably need, but it's it's a nice way to listen. So but the turntables have all changed as well because they're all USB now. They'll plug into your laptop. Correct, yeah. They're it, it, it's slightly more sophisticated, but there's still a stylus. There's still a needle. There's still the potential to scratch the record. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it hasn't changed at all really. And still these coloured limited editions and all the things when we were kids that were going around are still the same. Um, I suppose th there is a, there is probably a sound difference from an MP3. Like if if you have a good setup, there's a a considerable sound difference. So some guys would chase the sound, other guys just like the whole process. So um, there's a number of reasons. There's probably a bit of sentimentality attached to it, you know. Um, is there an age profile coming through the door now? I mean, do you find do you have the younger kids still coming in looking? What I miss about things like Spotify or, or YouTube or wherever people go and source their stuff is the browsing. I used to spend hours wandering around HMV, God rest it, and, and that I enjoyed. Now, do people still want to do that? Um, yeah, we, we, we would see it, all right. Like, uh, not as much, our demographic is probably predominantly male and it probably is 
mainly 30 to 60 year old male all right but it, there's more and more in the uk now they reckon that the 18 to 30 year old market is starting to drive the vinyl so no um which is great that the, 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 that demographic is starting to cling on to. I, I feel they're losing out. We all had tribes as we were growing up, whether you're a Modi or a cure head or, you know, um, a punk or whatever, you know. So I think it's good to have an affinity or an association with some sort of, some sort of band or, you know. So. Yeah, and and is there like Ed, I'm looking at Ed Sheeran sitting there, yeah. slap bang centre. Is it all Ed Sheeran? I mean, there was a time there. Where I think Ed Sheeran was number one of everything. Yeah, um, I suppose Ed Sheeran is a big marketing machine and a talented boy and his guitar in hand and writes his own songs, so I would knock him in, in the least. Um, but we, us here, we'd be more of a niche business. We would sell a bit more left to center stuff than Ed Sheeran. No, we don't great, but Ed Sheeran was probably the biggest selling album yeah, yeah, of the year. Like, but so who, yeah. who, who, who else are you shifting at the moment? Well, we've done well with Picture House, and we've done really well with The National, we've done well with the new Queens of the Stone Age, we'll do really well with the new U2. Um, we do well with a lot of the reissues, like if the Stones have a reissue, you know, we'll do well with that. Beatles stuff, Gilmore had live in Pompeii out this week, I know it done really well, David Gilmore, Pink Floyd, so that done really well for us. Um, so it, it's, it's more slightly left the centre, you know, rather than the chart, rather than the Katy Perry's and the... The, the well, stuff they'll get that for free elsewhere if they and really want to go looking for it and that's the challenge for you yeah. it, everything is free in this uh, like that we're battling free like yeah, i yeah. kind of would often say we're like the vegetarian option you know like it's consumption of music you know we're still an option but we're like the vegetarian option it's healthy though and it's good <laughs> <laughs> it's good for you yeah, it's good, good for you yeah. uh, and i have to ask you like there's lots of cds around here uh lots of vinyl on the wall uh books everything and he signed the old tape coming back. I mean, I grew up well, listening to tapes, making you, tapes, you, mixing tapes. You'll find tapes as well if you search far enough away, yeah. So there, is there, there tapes is, here? There is tapes. Come over and show me what yeah, tapes you had. Well, we, we wouldn't have many, no, but there is a couple of band called Band of Horses had a few reissues there on cassette. So there's a couple. So they actually, pro- there, there are people still producing yeah, there tapes? there is cassettes, yeah, yeah. Brand new, out of the box. They're actually a weekly thing. We don't have much of a market for it, but there will probably be about 20 tapes a week sold to me if I was to buy them. I don't generally purchase them, but they're actually starting this year now in the UK. There's going to be um, uh, a cassette tape day. We have a record shop day already. It's the yeah. third Saturday in April every year, but this year, it's actually this month, it's late October, there's going to be a cassette shop day. So, yeah, I know. <laughs> I think th- I think there was about 200,000 tapes all worldwide last year, like cassette tapes. So we, I'm not like, mad. It is actually not, coming no, back. No, yeah, no, it is coming back again. Yeah, yeah. Tell me, just to finish up, you're obviously big into music and you know the bands you like and I kind of got a hint of it there because yeah. you're selling what you like. In many ways, is this like your dream job? And it was when you were a kid that you'd work in a record shop, selling music, having people come in, asking you questions. Yeah, a lot, like, but man, it's hard work now. It's so much harder from what it was even 15 years ago. Before 15 years ago, you just pull up the shutter and people would generally come to you. Everyone that passed your door was potentially a customer. Whereas now, that's not the case with the advent of just technology, really. So you have to pull more people in. It's much more work. I, I, like it'd be a very long week every week of the year, 50 weeks of the year, you know. So, um, But it is a dream job at the other side of it, like, and when you, it goes well. Do you remember the old Douglas Shopping Centre? Because I can't remember, was there a record shop there here? There was always the kind of record shops in and out, I think. Yeah, there was. I think, was it Laser were here at one point? Yeah. It's it's foggy. I'm I, I'm from more the city centre, so I was born in Barrack Street, so town would have been my, my, my my, my choice. You this know, would have so been a day out. This would have been a big day out, Jack. <laughs> right, Ray, we so, wish you the very best of luck with it. Uh, yeah. Plenty of vinyl here for people who want to come in and find it. Thanks very much thank for joining us Red Business. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. Cheers. The Red Business Podcast with CompuB. And now we are in the shop It's So Me, which is in Douglas Village Shopping Centre with Vicky Creeper in front of me. Vicky, you'll forgive me that I have never come into your shop before, but I'm hardly in your target demographic, I think it's fair to say. Uh, probably not, yeah. but you never know. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the shop. OK, it's a boutique shop, so I stock international brands. I stock uh, Ted Baker, Danish brands Inwear Part 2, Karen by Simonson, and a lifestyle brand called Jules. Is it very hard to stay ahead of the curve these days with fashion? Because, you know, here you are, an independent retailer. You've got TK Maxx across the road where people can go to. I think Marks & Spencer's up the front here. There's a lot of competition around here. How do you manage to kind of draw in the customers who are passing your door? I suppose, to be honest, with a boutique shop, the difference is it's very much a one-on-one service it's about knowing your customer knowing what they want it's 
basically when you're doing a buy, when you're going and you're, you're buying 12 months in advance and you're buying with individual customers in mind. So that, that's what differentiates me from the likes of the, the big department stores or the likes of TK Maxx or the likes of Marks and Spencers. That's what differentiates a boutique. How did you get into this business? Because it's a difficult one. Uh, obviously, you, you must have always liked fashion, but how did you decide I'm going to make a few bob out of this? Oh, funny story, actually. I've always loved fashion, always loved it, but it, it wasn't my first career choice. Um, I studied for years. I'm a qualified solicitor. Oh, you, you came from the law? Yes, okay. yeah, legal background. And... The opportunity arose, as I said, fashion was always my first love and I never thought that I could make a career out of it. And when the recession hit and the legal profession was drying up and everything, an opportunity arose and opened the shop eight years ago and so haven't looked back since. You opened it eight years ago, so you opened it in, in 2009. Nine, yes. Not a great time to start a business. No. Very, you were either foolhardy or, uh, or, or very clever. I can't, which did it prove to be? Years and years of working in retail, barking research, everything, knowing that there was a gap in the market. And I personally felt at the time that I could fill, fill that gap. And how do you, what's your stock and trade here? Is, is it people, uh, casual dress, coming in looking for weddings? Like who, who's your target market? My target market, to be honest, I could dress any woman from 20 to 80. Um, different Brands would look after different demographics. You'd have the likes of Ted Baker, which would be the woman going to a wedding, looking for nice workwear, occasion wear. And then I have a brand Jules, which would be... I'm just going to take it. I have a brand Jules. Sorry, there now. So you know, say, oh, you have brand, say I have a brand Jules? I have a brand Jules, which would be a weekend lifestyle kind of a brand that would suit maybe the older lady, the, the lady that wants to dress down at the weekend, that's out and about with children, you know, just... You have a little bit of everything. Everything, yeah. everything. And it's the skill that you bring to dressing that person that is the USP of the store. Exactly. Do you remember the old Douglas Shopping Centre? I do, I do. I would have been in here as a child and I remember it. The outdoors and all the different shops and it would have been very much then, I suppose, which has continued to now, it would have been a lot of independent stores and that's after carrying through all through the years which is really nice to see yeah and i think where we are in this particular run where your shop is yeah. the superfruit used to be somewhere around used, here yeah the, yeah two three doors yeah two. and the old quinsworth toys used to be down the back where i met darth vader yeah. in the 80s yeah. which is a very vivid memory of mine yeah like it's great to see the center doing so well isn't it, it is it is and as i said what's even nicer is the fact that a lot of the stores in here are still independent which is which is lovely to see so you've decided the law is not for you, yes. which is, um, I, I, I'm in that list as well, of people who study the law and oh, didn't yeah. go on to do it, so I understand where yeah. you're coming from. How, where's the future? Is the future, are, are you going to trade out here for the rest of your days? Are you, have you expansion plans? Do you know what's happening next? The future, I suppose, to be honest, is always trying to stay ahead of the trend, trying to always bring something new to the store, try and expand it. This season I moved into shoes and more accessories and have something planned for next season as well. So it's always just trying to stay ahead and, and bring something new to the customer. Well, Vicky, Keep them interested. the <laughs> store looks great, to be fair, um, and I'm sure I, well, customers would have come in, except there's a guy standing with a <laughs> microphone in the middle of the shop talking to you, so that might have deterred them. I'll leave it to you, Vicky Creeper. Uh, it, it's So Me is the name of the store. Thank you for joining us on Thank Red you. Business. Thank you. The Red Business Podcast with CompuB, Apple technology and solutions for your business. CompuB.com. So that was the story of three, just three, of the businesses trading in Douglas Village Shopping Centre. But I, that was such... A variety there and like particularly with Michael the family who are here for 40 years you know we've Ray who's just after opening the shop Vicky who's been here for a decade it's all constantly changing isn't it yes it is and you see there were only three stories of let's say 53 stories that we could potentially cover you know and I mean if you if, 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 if you look at the variety and the mix and the mix that we that we have now is very strong because you know obviously we have Tesco we have MS and we have you know TK Max recently but even between the library post office you know there's a bank you know and there's there's there's, there's plenty of fashion I mean 30% of our tenant mix would be fashion and then there's you know other services you know you have 
you have a nice mix of restaurant, like you know, from worldwide brands like like Starbucks to you know a, an operation like Puccino's, which is you know always busy and, and and you know very popular with families and smaller kids and and everybody else. You and know. it's it's always busy. I mean, we're standing here today now. It's the middle of the afternoon. It's it's really busy already, and the schools haven't even finished up yet, which makes it busier again. I can't finish up without asking you about your Cork accent, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming through loud and clear. Um, where where are you from originally? Uh, Poland originally, yes. And you're, but you're, you've been in Cork long enough to pick up a good bit of the yeah, Cork it accent. Seems like it, seems like it. <laughs> how how does the retail offering here compare to what you would have had growing up? I mean, presumably Poland has improved an awful lot in terms of their retail offering as Ireland has. Uh, look, to be fair, they're, they're they're similar. You know, some brands obviously would be you know would be would be in Poland, would be all over Europe, would be here. You know, so so it's not that much different. You know, I mean, I I grew up in Pos- I grew up in Poznan, which is a bigger city than Cork, you know, so, so, um, so, I mean, there, there would be probably, you know, the mixture of brands could be, could be, could be, could be a bit stronger maybe there. But on, nothing, on nothing point. as good as Douglas Shopping Centre. No, and I mean, this is, I had, <laughs> no, but. And you're obliged to say that, but you'll say it anyway. No, to be fair, as a, like, I mean, I've worked in Blackpool, you know, here in, in, in Cork as well, and then I've came to Douglas and I have always found that Douglas has been quite unique for a number of reasons, you know, but obviously, you know, the, the whole catchment area obviously spreads over Douglas and I mean through Rochester, Craig and whatever but again and I said it at the start of, of, of our conversation here as well I have always felt that Douglas is a very 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 strong community spirit and this shopping centre in particular have been very important place for all of this community always kind of grow and bond together and obviously I've been lucky enough to to bond with it as well but but it's it's really it's really something something magnificent to experience you know people of Douglas are are great you know and I mean and, and, and again, as you can see through mixture of our tenants, it's sometimes, yes, it's, it's the brands as well, but in many ways it's actually people behind, behind those brands and people that are creating those stories and people that are bringing everybody here together, like with, you know, from kids and through, through the generations of, of, you know, young and growing. I mean, we look at the, you know, little kids here behind us on a pepperoid kitty, on Peppa Pig kitty ride behind us. And I mean, they are future customers and they are people that are going to be coming here from you know, for, for next generations and, they, they, and in years to come. They'll speak of Peppa Pig as I spoke about the concrete tube that we used to sit in yes, outside exactly, when exactly, Mam was putting exactly. the, tro- the stuff into the trolley. Bartos, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for Thank introducing us to those wonderful stories today. And uh, we look forward for many years of success for the Douglas Village great, Shopping Centre. Great to, great to meet you as well. And I mean, you're always welcome. So thank you very much as well. My thanks to Bartosz and everybody at Douglas Village Shopping Centre and of course Neil Hennessy who helped put all of this together. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes and we'll catch you on the next Red Business. <laughs>